Okay. Thank you all for coming on this uh, wonderful rainy day uh, <laughs> in the middle of the exam seasons, uh, end terms, uh, finals, and all other uh, forms of uh, uh, academic uh, explanations. Um, well, what is this project about? Uh, this project came into being by, uh, by my professor, actually, <laughs> who came to me uh, with a plan uh, to host uh, our guest, uh, John Worth, here, uh, and to give him some uh, space to speak about the subject that uh, not a lot of people are um, aware of, and that is that uh, it's quite hard to travel internationally uh, by train that is between the borders of the European Union, which is a bit absurd, yeah, because it's quite easy to travel by car. We have Schengen, we have open access, and by uh, bus, and even by uh, air, you know, by, by plane. But uh, if you want to travel by the greenest uh, type mode of uh, land travel, uh, that is the train, uh, you are quite limited. And uh, we hope that in this discussion, this panel, uh, we will have some answers uh, for, the, for the public and that John will explain to us maybe what are the possible solutions, uh, how can we improve the situation in the European Union and um, I think that's it. Um, I would like to thank you again and uh, give the word to the Vice uh, Dean of the Faculty. That's it. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to this panel. Uh, my name is Mladen Ikšić. I'm Vice Dean for uh, Administration, Business and Affairs. And uh, I'm also, first of all, a railway man, not Vice Dean. So um, I'm very interested in these topics. And uh, it's interesting, like uh, our Mr. Jurci said, uh, that we have many barriers uh, for the railways, but um, 20 or 50 years ago, these all barriers was not uh, mm, uh, we, we present. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, today uh, we want to travel everywhere, but trains uh, we trains, but uh, this is not possible. For example, uh, uh, to Serbia, to Italy, or some other countries, and uh, we want to open these uh, barriers to uh, travel all around the Europe or other parts of the world. So uh, I want your success, uh, successful uh, work today. Uh, I want uh, to greet you uh, in the name of the faculty management. So uh, please uh, uh, feel comfortable and good uh, at this panel. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right. Now you. Right? Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Herve Vranesh, uh, and I will tell you something uh, about uh, our association. Uh, today, I will uh, talk to you uh, in replacement of Carlo Colesa, our, our national president. Uh, he could not uh, join us, unfortunately, today. Uh, so, firstly, uh, thank you to our lecturers, uh, Mr. Wirth and Professor Abramovich. Uh, secondly, uh, thank to uh, organizing committee of this event uh, for taking the time to talk about this very important topic uh, here today at Faculty of uh, Traffic and Transport Sciences. Uh, then a word about our history. So our Croatian Academic uh, Union is um, one of the oldest and one of the biggest uh, student associations uh, in Croatia. Uh, we have a long history from 1990s. Uh, we were always fighting for improvement of uh, student rights. Uh, firstly, uh, in foundation of uh, Croatian um, Student Council in the 90s. And then a few years ago, uh, in initiative 300 is equal to 300 ECTS points. And also in increasing the student minimum wage, uh, which we are always trying to increase by a lot of initiatives. <laughs> uh, and uh, lastly, uh, that's it. Uh, thank you everyone for coming and have a great conference. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. I hope so that you can hear me. Uh, 
So, uh, my name is Borna Abramovic. Uh, I'm working here at the Department for Railway Transport at the Faculty of Transport and Traffic Sciences, University of Zagreb. Uh, I will be the first speaker of today occasion. Uh, I prepare one small presentation of only two hours, so I hope so that you will do it. <laughs> uh, so, my presentation title is uh, Past, Present and the Future uh, of Railway in Southeast Europe. So, I hope that we can start. So, for introduction, I prepare some not usual introduction. So, who of you has read it? Agatha Christie, Murder on the Orient Express. Or at least, okay, one, <laughs> two, three, four. Look, a movie. Much more. And who knows okay. which railway station in Croatia it was filmed in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, do you know in which part of the network between Istanbul and Paris, the murder happened. Gotcha. Excellent. So it was between Vinkovci and Slavonski Broad in Croatia, <laughs> today's Croatia. Okay, and in stations Trizivo and Avrpolje, you have like a small museum about the murder of the Orient Express. <laughs> okay, so the next thing, uh, the line between Novska and Vinkovci in time in the 80s, was the fifth railway line in Europe that we run trains 160 km per hour. Imagine, in the whole Europe, we was the fifth country that ran very fast train in this moment. So it was like 35 years ago, but we was one of the pioneers of speedy trains in Europe. The next thing, uh, this, uh, this axe, it's traffic acts, it's from the west, we can say like from Munich, we are Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia, until Istanbul. So this is very important traffic acts in the scope of Europe. When you look at the map of the Europe, we can see that uh, this line is very, very important. So very, very important. And last but not the least, I always said that the wealth of the country is measured by the power of the railway. So what do you think, which country is the wealthiest in the world? When we <laughs> combine with the railway, of course. Japan. <laughs> Japan, okay. My personal opinion is Switzerland. <laughs> okay, my personal opinion is Switzerland, because when you came to the Switzerland, you can do everything Japan. by the railway, and they have quite a lot of gold, good chocolate and cheese, so they are quite wealthy. <laughs> Okay, so for this presentation for today, I concentrate on one line, that it's Ljubljana, capital of Slovenia, oh. Zagreb, <laughs> capital of Croatia, and Belgrade, capital of Serbia. So you can see here the scheme, how the line is go, and this is, by my opinion, the most important line in this part of the Europe. Okay, so I will start with some statistics. So we do this uh, research in in front of the project called Init Kosi Rail, so you can see the title of the project. And we do so-called desktop research, and we counted the number of trains. So on this graph, uh, on YX, you can see the number of the trains, and on XX, you can see the years. So you can see that we start from 28 trains in 85 to only five trains in 2015. Okay, so it's look not so good. Okay, uh, one of the reason is that in the 90s was the war on this area, so we can see rapidly drop down of the trains during the war area. But when we exclude the war area, and we make one quite simple linear regression, okay, very simple, we can see that trends start quite a lot earlier. Okay, so we can see that the train was dropping around quite earlier. What do you think, what is the main reason? Hmm? Any guess? <laughs> no, no, something else. We finished the highway from Ljubljana to Belgrade. And you can use the cars. <laughs> okay, so when we do this research in 2018, there was only three trains on this line, okay? Can someone guess how many trains we have today? None. 
None. It's zero, exactly zero. So you can see that linear regression is quite smart. <laughs> okay, you can use it in all life uh, experience or you can use it when you want to calculate something. The next graph, it's called, we call that speed section. So it's speeds in uh, uh, 1985. And you can see the Ljubljana is on the left. Then Zagreb, Slavonski, Brod, Vinkovci and Belgrade. So you can see the fastest part of the line was in Croatia, okay, between uh, Zagreb and Slavonski Brod, and then afterward between Slavonski Brod and Vinkovci. And you can see here, this is most important, the number of the trains and the names of the trains. Okay, so you can see here very, very uh, important train in the 80s passed through Croatia. Maybe you are quite young people here, so you cannot recall that, okay? But maybe you can read it about it. For example, Helax Express, Istanbul Express, Acropolis Express, Simplon Express. So th th this was European trains, okay, that run through Croatia. This is very, very interesting. And then in 2015, we can see the number of the trains. It's very low. And the speediest line was between... Slavonski Brod and Vinkovci with the maximum speed of 115 km per hour. Okay, and like I said, only five trains. So very small amount of the trains run in 2015. This is 10 years ago. So in our project, we conclude that very important part of railway system is organization. So you need to run a good organization. Next thing, we find out that the politics, it's very important. Politics. Why the politics? We need to implement EU directives and regulations. And this is very important. Lobbying and prioritizing of investments. So we need to lobby for good investment in railway sector. This is very, very important. When we don't have lobbying, we will have only highways. So that's why it's very important that the railway has their own logging, uh, lobbying system. And then, very, very sadly, when we do the, this research, the public opinion about the railway, it's very bad. Okay, so the average Croatian citizens has very bad opinion about the railway system. Why? Because it's bad. Okay, so we need to improve it. We need to improve it. The next thing that we conclude, it's quality and funding. So what does mean? At one side, you need to have quality infrastructure. So you cannot have an infrastructure for 60 km per hour in today, well, today's scope. We need at least 160 km per hour. Okay? Then we need to have like new modern rolling stocks that is feasible for today people. Okay? People change with the years, so we need also change the rolling stocks. And the last and not least, we need to introduce new technologies. Okay? This is very, very important that we introduce some new technologies in our railway system. Very important uh, things nowadays in the railway system is human resource management. So I always said, we can build the excellent infrastructure. We can build the excellent rolling stock. We can introduce excellent new technologies. But when we don't have people, we don't have nothing. So the people are the key in the railway sector, system. Without the people, we cannot run the system. Okay. And they're all old. And uh, <laughs> what is very important also, <laughs> that we need to make a network. This is maybe connecting to lobbying. So we need to make a connection between deep, different stakeholders at European level, at regional level, between different infrastructure manager, railway operators, uh, passengers, some uh, logistic He's company right. and so it's on, that time. we bring uh, new light in the railway sector. And today we will talk mostly about the passengers, okay? And competition, sorry, I forget about competition. It's also very key that we make a competition on our railway. And today we will talk mostly about the passengers, so the mobility. And my definition, that mobility is moving. So people like to move. Imagine, when you sit, after 45 minutes you have keen strength that you need to move somewhere. Okay, so uh, people like to move. So what we need to do in our system, 
we need to move people. Very important things that we don't move trains and buses. <laughs> Very often we move trains and buses with no people, so something is wrong. Okay, we need to move people with the buses and trains. Okay, the next thing, everywhere. It is not good that we move people only in urban area with the railway. We need to go to the rural area and we need to like be present in every uh, part of the country with the trains. So urban and rural area. The next thing that is very important is yeah. always. <laughs> so we need whole day services. Sunday, Sunday what that means? It means it's that disaster. when we have one day train per day, <laughs> or we have two trains per day. This is nothing. We will not use the trains. We need to have, through the day, some kind of the services. Maybe every two hours, maybe one hour, depending on the demand, but we need to have uh, regular services during the day. And the last but not the least, I always believe that the railway system is a sustainable system. And we need to build a new sustainable railway system. Maybe again I can say, my dream is Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, instead of the conclusion of my, this short presentation, I will quote one American. Okay, this is very funny. So I will not quote anyone from Europe. I will quote one American. So the first part of the sentence go like this. The reality about transportation is that future oriented. So, what happened today, it's not matter anymore. Okay, I came with the tram. It's finished story. Okay, so, if we planning for what we have, we are behind the curve. It means that when we plan some transport services, we need to focus to the future, not what is happening today, because today it's closed. It's finished. So we need to go at least 10 years in advance to see what can happen in 10 years and then adjust our system. And like I said, this was the quote from Anthony Hawks, Fox. Sorry, uh, He was United States Secretary of Transportation. So very, very smart guy. <laughs> okay. So at this moment, I will thank you for your attention okay. and let push the railway forward. Right then. Okay, let's switch it over. So, uh, 